Belgium is on high alert after multiple terror attacks shook the city. At least 30 people are dead and hundreds more injured. LAX ramped up security today in response to the terror attacks. We'll hear from police and passengers about the security changes. Yeah, I'm at USC's Verna and Peter Dwardiff Hall. We're inside the building. There's going to be a panel discussion in just a couple of moments talking about Islamophobia. Now, later on in the show, I'll bring you an interview from one of the panelists to talk and give students advice on how to overcome this fear. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. Belgian officials are searching for potential suspects after several blasts shook an airport and a subway station in Brussels. Multiple explosions left at least 34 people dead and more than 200 injured. Good evening, I'm Taylor Edchill. And I'm Ivana Wynn. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attacks in Belgium. Tonight, officials are still searching for the suspects behind the attacks, and Belgium is now at its highest terror alert level. Early this morning, terrorists bombed Belgium's major airport and the subway station in central Brussels. The Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for the blasts. The airport was hit first with two blasts. At least one blast was reportedly from a suicide attacker and another was a suitcase bomb. About 40 minutes later, another blast struck the subway. Around 8 a.m. local time, two bombs went off in the departure hall of Brussels Airport in Zaventem, Belgium. Then, another bomb struck subway commuters about 40 minutes later in central Brussels near Malabiek Station. Belgium's terrorism alert is at its highest level. Belgium's authorities say this surveillance photo shows three men who are the possible suspects in the attacks. The two men in black are likely to be the suicide bombers, and police are looking for the man in the light-colored jacket. Their identities and motives are unknown at this point. Through police raids conducted across Belgium following the attacks, authorities say they have found one house containing a nail-filled bomb, chemical products, and an Islamic State flag. There are few details known about the victims of the attacks. At least nine Americans were injured. Three Mormon missionaries from Utah and a U.S. service member are among those hurt. The three Mormon missionaries are 19-year-old Joseph Mason Wells, 66-year-old Richard Norby, and 20-year-old Joseph M.P. They're all in the hospital. They were serving in Paris and were at the airport with another missionary who was on her way to an assignment in Ohio. The atmosphere in Brussels has been evolving all day. We spoke with journalist and president Raoul Venkit, who has been covering the attacks in his city. What happened today was Brussels' worst nightmare. Like, there were times when I was off camera, when I moments where you would kind of try and process what impact this would have on your life. Um, and and uh, it feels like a personal assault. It feels like someone has you know, inflicted terror in your in your home, in in a city, you know, where you've kind of, which, which you've grown to love, you know, despite all its flaws. Surely this will change our way of life, but, you know, today is just a profound sadness. Each of Europe's nations are on the highest form of terror alert, causing increased security at all borders. The attack could sway the Brexit vote that is coming up in June. The decision on whether Europe will stay as the European Union is influenced by the perceived dangers of free borders. Several USC students studying abroad in Belgium are safe, but rattled tonight after the deadly terror attacks. Here at school today, everyone was talking about what was going on and the whole atmosphere was kind of, everyone was a bit shaken. So luckily we weren't there, we weren't taking the metro today, um, but we couldn't hear anything, just a lot of sirens uh, going up and down the streets and some people kind of yelling in the streets. It felt super surreal, considering it's something that we kind of talk about as a group and think about a lot. Um, to have it actually happen was really, really shocking. This is a video shot in Brussels today by Maddie Sampson. As you can see, many streets were closed and the city was on high alert due to the terror attacks. 
Annenberg Media reached out to the USC Study Abroad program, but did not receive a response. President Obama offered his condolences to the people of Belgium from Cuba today and pledged the U.S.'s full commitment to ending terrorism. We will do whatever is necessary to support our friend and ally Belgium in bringing to justice those who are responsible. And this is yet another reminder that the world must unite. We must be together, regardless of nationality or race or faith in fighting against the scourge of terrorism. To show support for the victims of Brussels, President Obama has ordered all American flags in the United States to be flown at half-staff until Saturday. Travelers at LAX today saw increased security like bomb squads, armored cars, and canine units. Reporter Madison Keevy went to the airport to see how these safety precautions impacted travel. Terror attacks have spurred heightened security measures throughout the United States. We checked in with ATVN reporter Mark Salinger in Washington, D.C. for the latest on security measures being implemented at key locations across the states. Here at Washington's Reagan Airport, the TSA line right now has died down, but the TSA is still saying that they've beefed up security at checkpoints just like the one behind me at airports across the country. But what it all comes down to is where people are screened. From the time in between passengers getting to the airport terminal to when they've actually passed security, no one's been screened. That means that people could have objects in their bags, such as bombs, just like the one in Brussels, and nobody knows. That's exactly what happened in Brussels today, and that's what makes an airport in between the time that people arrive and the checkpoint at the security checkpoint a soft target. A greater police presence was seen at One World Trade Center. New York National Guard members were assigned to the city's airports while state troopers have patrolled Times Square and the city's subways. Similarly, the airports and mass transit stations in Boston and Chicago have ramped up efforts to protect passengers. Presidential candidates turned their attention to, to today's attacks in Brussels while voters in four states cast their ballots in presidential primaries. Democratic candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders pledged to stand strong with our allies. We have to continually be learning and getting ahead of these uh, thugs and criminals in order to uh, prevent uh, them doing what they did uh, in Brussels. We are making progress in Iraq. ISIS is losing 20% uh, of the territory it held last year. But clearly, we have got to do more. On the Republican side, Donald Trump tweeted, quote, Do you all remember how beautiful and safe a place Brussels was? Not anymore. It is from a different world. U.S. must be vigilant and smart, end quote. This is not a lone wolf. This is a war with radical Islamic terrorism. ISIS has declared jihad. If we do not put all of our focus and attention on these kinds of matters, ultimately we're going to see even more activity in the United States. While some of the comments by presidential candidates are resonating with voters, one counterterrorism expert at USC has a different perspective. I think that it's irresponsible. I think that one of the things we do well here is work with those communities that may be at risk of recruitment or radicalization. You don't enlist community support by alienating, disenfranchising, um, and disengaging with them. So it does not help at all. In light of recent attacks, many policy experts agree the topic of terrorism will be a major issue in the coming months of the presidential race. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti said police are making a show of force to send a message that L.A. is prepared for any possible attacks. He was joined today by community leaders to discuss safety and the importance of inclusivity. We have a well-prepared city. We know that terrorism, though, strikes in such random ways that we must all see where we can do our parts as individuals, as institutional leaders from the business community, the faith community, and others. I think our responsibility as citizens is to ensure, preserve, and even promote the idea of coexistence and pluralism in our society. That is the antidote to what ISIS wants, which is a, a world divided between religions. While there are no credible threats in Los Angeles, you can expect to see an increased police presence throughout the city.
Our reporter Priscilla Casper is outside USC Verna and Peter Dautriff Hall where there is a panel discussing Islamophobia. Priscilla, what's happening there? Yeah, thanks, Ivana. You know, after the attacks in Belgium today, there's been so many students coming out into this room. I was just up there and students are piling in to discuss how to be a solitary you know, nation and to also combat Islamophobia. You know, earlier today, I got a chance to talk to the Dean of Religious Life here at USC, and this is the advice he gave for students to overcome the fear. Taking a class on Introduction to Islam, I think, can really help a student uh, learn about Islam and appreciate Islam in a way they might not otherwise do. But knowing and befriending a Muslim, another Muslim student is even a more effective way uh, to learn about a tradition and um, appreciate a tradition. And people who know Muslims tend not to be Islamophobic. Okay, so I'm here with one of the attendees for the event tonight. And so why is it important for you to be here? Well, so I'm a, I'm a Muslim student here at USC, and so obviously Islamophobia is a big issue for me. So I just wanted to hear, especially this event, especially because they're bringing a very South Asian perspective to the whole issue. So coming from India, Muslims, Hindus, and Sikhs have a very interesting perspective on uh, um, Islam and, and uh, assimilation as well. And so on Twitter, hashtag Stop Islam has been trending. You know, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's kind of sad that someone felt compelled to create that hashtag, but honestly, I was looking through the Twitter feed today and I felt really good about the world because, I mean, you see the tweets that people are tweeting and they're honestly, they're bashing the hashtag. So uh, the Washington Post actually did re a research analysis and they said that in times of like terrorist attacks, anti-Islam, there's a spike in anti-Islam tweets, but what's even greater are the anti-anti-Islam uh, tweets that sort of bashing those guys. So it's really, it was, it was nice to see that people can still uh, keep their heads screwed on tight. And what would you say to all these people who have these negative connotations towards Muslims? What would you say to them? Honestly, like, I get it. I mean, it's hard to, I mean, you see what you see in the news. It's hard, it's hard to think otherwise, but all I can say is, um, you know, try to find a Muslim person and just talk to them. That's the, really the best way. Dialogue is the best way. Um, I just had a great conversation with an old friend from high school, and, and he had some of these same ideas that a lot of Trump supporters are having. And so I think just having a conversation with him for a few hours, I think I opened his mind a little bit. So I think that's all it needs is dialogue. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the discussion. And for all of you students out there who want to talk about Islamophobia, the discussion is going on in VPD in room 302. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. People all around the world are joining in a global conversation on Twitter about the terror attacks in Belgium. Some of the top trending hashtags revolve around the deadly Brussels attacks. As you can see at the top, they include hashtag Brussels with 2.1 million hits, followed by hashtag Bruxelles with 960,000 hits. And then we have hashtag Brussels attack at 240,000 hits. One response to the terror attacks has been artwork mourning the victims. A French artist's image of solidarity is spreading throughout social media. Glendale residents are protesting a plan to build a higher trash pile in their neighborhood. Low-income renters may see improved conditions with a new program. Find out how LA City Council proposes to fix the current system. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work, show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man, women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next. Find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art. 
because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Glendale residents living near a dump are fighting to have their voices heard. Reporter Kay Ingram spoke with residents about the impact this could dump onto the community. Residents of Glendale united at a park to speak out against a proposed plan to expand the Shoal Canyon landfill. These are very big trucks on a very heavily traveled street with a lot of family vehicles, a lot of kids, we've got schools up here, and we really need to take care of the families who live here, not the profits of Glendale. You know, I think about all the people around here, the young parents like me, whom it does directly affect every single day, and I want them to have uh, all the opportunities that any parent wants for their kids, which is to live in a healthful, clean environment. Trucks travel over here to this landfill where they dispose of waste. Now, that's what has a lot of residents upset, is how much can this canyon take? Glendale has proposed to put up to 8 million tons more trash into the landfill beyond what they are currently allowed to do. But a spokesperson for the city says that's just not the case. Their main goal is to reduce trash and expanding the landfill is just one option. The city of Glendale currently has no plans for an expansion of the landfill. LA County has their landfills. LA City has their landfills. But the cities of Pasadena does not. The city of La Quinana doesn't. The other smaller San Gabriel cities do not. All these LA County cities, where are they going to haul their trash? Still, some residents say another man's trash is not their problem. Everybody's got to dump trash, right? But, um, but the question is, you know, where? And this isn't the right place. The city says an expansion of the landfill won't be happening anytime soon. But residents have promised to keep speaking out until this option is off the table completely. For Annenberg Media, I'm Kay Ingram. A new bill could improve public access to detailed reports about officer-involved shootings. Attorney General Kamala Harris wants to require police agencies to file the reports to her office electronically so that they can quickly be posted on a state website for viewing. No reliable database currently tracks all police shootings in California. So Taylor, I think we had a pretty nice start for spring. Yeah, it was really nice and hot over spring break in terms of weather, but let's check in with our weather anchor, Veronica Quesada, to see if these hot temperatures are sticking around. Thank you, and yeah, you're right. It was warm and perfect over the spring break. Things started to cool down this week, though, with high winds. Right now, we are at 7 miles per hour, 69 degrees, which does feel a bit cooler because of that wind. Let's take a look at tomorrow's forecast. We have... 49 up in Big Bear, 79 down in Riverside. Now moving back up north, we have 77 in Simming Valley and 70 down in the coast in Malibu. Taking a look at USC for tomorrow, we have 76. It, we also have high winds tomorrow, so bring a light jacket, ponytail if you have long hair, 75 down in Long Beach, and 80 in Anaheim. Now taking a look at five-day forecast, we have low 50s throughout the week. For the, for the lows and high 70s for the highs, we will end the week of 74 degrees and with a low of 56 degrees. Back to you. Yeah, so what are you thinking about this weather? Are you liking it? Are you liking that it's cooling down? A little bit, but you know what? It's going to get hot later, so that's what I'm really looking forward to and going to the beach, of course. Oh, I have to go to the beach. I haven't been for the semester yet. Thanks so much. Okay, so the LA City Council is considering a proposal to create an enhanced repairs program for low-income rental homes. <gasps> Renters and advocates of the Quality Repairs Pilot Program posted a rally to sh show support for fixing a major flaw in the current repair system. What this would do is it would close a loophole that exists by allowing landlords to get a 15-day advance notice when a tenant files a complaint. What happens right now is a tenant is done, I'm tired of complaining to the landlord, I go file a complaint with the City of Los Angeles. The City of Los Angeles doesn't immediately come and inspect. What they do is they come and say, hey landlord, here's a notice, we'll be back in 15 days. That allows for landlords to make quick repairs, not getting down to the root cause of it. The LA City Council is expected to vote on the proposal before Renters Day on April 20th. 
College hoops may be over for the Trojans, but March sports madness is in full force. Let's check in with our sports anchor, Ty Hawkins, for the latest on USC Athletics. Thanks, Ivana. The sun, the sun is shining, and so are the women of Troy who are undefeated and have a number one ranking in water polo. Women's lacrosse is also undefeated, but now looks to test its medal against the high-scoring Dartmouth squad. And beach volleyball had some fun in the sun, netting another win this afternoon. All that and more coming up in sports. Sit tight and don't touch that dial. I didn't write that. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Welcome back to ATVN. Seven wins and zero losses. That's the overall record for the number eight ranked Women of Troy lacrosse team, which is off to the best start in the program's four-year history. It's an exciting time for the young program, which continues to make history this season. Already, they've matched a program best win streak of seven games set in 2015. Their top 10 ranking is also a program best. USC faces off against the Dartmouth Green starting at 2 on Friday, followed by the Oregon Ducks who are flying down from Eugene on a Sunday afternoon contest at 12. You can also catch both matches at McAllister Field. The Women of Troy water polo team has continued to dominate the pool wherever they go. With the number one ranking and an undefeated record, they're staying the course and keeping a level head. We're just getting into the like thick of our conference games, so it's good for our confidence going into it, and we just have to continue it. Went into this knowing that it was possible and that we could do it, um, and just seeing it happen is just like a huge confidence booster. Up next for USC is a trip up north to San Jose State to face the Spartans at one on Saturday. After faulting on three of their first four matches of the season, the Women of Troy tennis team served up a four-game win streak now they're back in Los Angeles, and up next are the Oregon Ducks. We can see that all of our hard work is paying off. We actually have like the same mindset, even if we're losing or winning, just focusing on our game, getting better, working together as a team. I know Oregon's really good this year. They're definitely a lot better than past years. Uh, we had a close match with them last year, but we just can't underestimate them. And, you know, just, I don't know, just go in there and play to win. Win streak to five on Friday against the Ducks at Mark Stadium at 1.30. Out to the stand, the number three USC women's beach volleyball team picked up two wins at home today to improve to 11-2 overall. In their doubleheader, the women of Troy topped number six Long Beach State four sets to one. Afterwards, USC swept California, taking all five sets. The women of Troy are on a seven straight dual win streak on the top court. Juniors Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes won both of their matches, improving their pair's record to 16 and 0. Oh! The women of Troy will return to the sand on April 1st in Miami, Florida for the Surf and Turf Classic. USC baseball pushes win streak to three after pulling ahead of Cal State Fullerton in the eighth inning Monday evening with the home run from Corey Dempster to defeat the Titans 3 to 2 at home. The Trojans are back on the road to play UC Santa Barbara for two games beginning Thursday before returning home to Dado Field right here for the weekend. And it's been a lot of number ones, my goodness. The number one ranked USC women's golf team continued to dominate at Mayhem in March championships today in San Diego. They beat Stanford 4-1 to one to advance to tomorrow's final round. USC avenged last year's NCAA championship semifinal loss. 
In tomorrow's final round, USC will face Arizona with an 8.45 tee time. And before the Lakers-Memphis Grizzlies game, NBA and Los Angeles City officials announced that the 2018 All-Star Game will be coming to the Staples Center for the third time. This will also be the sixth time Los Angeles is hosting the most for any city. LA last hosted the All-Star Game in 2011. Oh wow, three times the charm. Three times, my goodness. And welcome back. LA's really making a push. They've got the Coliseum Bureau built, the Olympics, and now All-Star Game. It's great. Oh, that's really exciting. Are you gonna, do you want to go watch it? Oh yeah. Can well, you? <laughs> when I, when I, if I can come down from Bakersfield in my job, I'll drive down <laughs> and check out the All-Star Game. For sure, okay. Thanks so much, Ty. Let's go. Thanks, Ty. After the break, we'll see artwork spreading across social media around the world. Earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake, and you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake today. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening in the day? Let's go, Billy Whites, man. Yeah. 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 How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. We leave you tonight with a piece of artwork from the French cartoonist Jean Plantereau. His designs show the French flag embracing the Belgian flag in the wake of today's terror attacks. The picture has gone viral on several social media sites, receiving more than 9,000 retweets on Twitter and more than 8,000 likes on Instagram. Tonight, our political reporters Max Schwartz and Ali Main will be bringing you the latest on today's primaries and caucuses. Make sure to watch the live stream at uscannenbergmedia.com. Right. What do you think about the artwork? It's beautiful. It's and, so nice. You know, in the midst of all this chaos, it's nice that some, posi some positivity can be spread you know, on social media. Yeah, sure. Can you draw like that? I second that. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, yeah. Can I draw like that? You have a phenomenal artist. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Ty. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for watching An Annenberg TV News. From everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Ivana Wynn. And I'm Taylor Adler. You can watch us on the web at USC Annenberg Media.